Hi, it's Mike Bellevue here, and um, I'm coming to you from my studio. Uh, earlier this week, I showed you a video of the Malden Viking Sword from um, Windless's Battle Cry line, transformed into a more historically accurate looking sword. And uh, a lot of you, well, some of you anyway, well, better not lie. Uh, some of you sent me comments and emails saying, boy, you would have liked to have seen the actual step-by-step -step transformation of that sword. And, and I'll be honest with you, I kind of expected to show it to you, but what happened is the video went over 11 minutes long anyway, and I, I didn't think that would be all that popular, so I just cut it out to keep it around the 11-minute mark instead of the 20-minute mark. But since a number of you asked, I'm putting out a special out-of-sequence uh, video showing you how I did it. So buckle yourself in. All right, I think everybody uh, pretty much knows by now that the Battle Cry line of, uh, of Windless Steelcraft swords all have this kind of funky, uh, you know, weathered blue black finish on them, uh, which I guess I do to save money. Um, you know, on polishing and whatnot, but but anyway, it makes them look a little bit historically funky, not uh, not correct. So I wanted to rectify that, and this video will show you how I did it step by step. So there were really three steps in doing this. The first one was taking that blued finish off of all of the exposed metal. The second step was to reconfigure the grip here on the hilt. And the final step in the transformation of the Malden Viking sword was to ditch that awful, flimsy, inaccurate leather scabbard and to make this wood cord linen wrap scabbard for it. So let me start off by showing you how I got that blued finish off of the blade. Right, so let's say that you like the uh, the price and the design and the technical specs of the windless uh, Malden Viking sword uh, in the Battle Cry line, but you're a reenactor and man, you just can't uh, you can't accept this dark finish, right? You'll get laughed out of camp. So what do you do? Well, it's really not that hard to take it off. Uh, I did some tests because I didn't know if this was a painted-on finish, like like paint or a powder coat, or an oxidized finish. And I'm quite sure it's an oxidized finish. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take some Naval Jelly Rust Dissolver, uh, which is the same thing you'd use to take off any oxidized finish, whether it's bad rust or, um, say, bluing on a gun barrel, which is what this appears to be similar to. So I'm going to coat some of the blade with navel jelly and we're gonna see what it does and my supposition is that it's gonna be taking that blue right off of there so I'll just let that work for a minute and uh, then we'll see what, what we got I've done one side I just put the navel jelly on let it sit for about five minutes wiped everything off as you can see it's got a nice patina, uh, you know, it's a nice steel color, it's not bright and shiny like stainless steel or a mirror finish, but we can get there if we want to. Now I was concerned that 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 bluing would be covering up a host of sins, um, and that the blade would have a lot of rough spots in it, but it does not, it actually looks pretty good, so polishing it will be fairly simple. So. We still have to do the other side. You can see where some of the navel jelly has spilled over. That gives you an idea of how dark the dark was and how much lighter the light's going to be. So I'm going to do this side and uh, do the Hilton pommel, cross garden pommel, and basically then we'll be done. We can polish it or do whatever we want. Okay, now you've taken the bluing off and you've got a finish that I would categorize as, say, a French gray. Uh, it's going to be a little bit streaky. Now, what I do at this point is I'm going to take just some oil. I'm going to put it on. Let me turn the uh, camera just a bit. Okay, I'm going to put a little oil on here. 
I'm going to take a kind of a medium weight 3M metal scouring pad, Scotch Brite, and I'm just going to start going over the blade and working that oil into it. We're getting a little bit more of a polish. It's still a slightly gray finish, and you can go as shiny as you want. And I'm going to I'm going to keep doing this and decide whether I want to buff it up to mirror finish or just a nice satin finish. Okay, so here we are with the Scotch Bright. Right, it's got a semi gloss, semi satin finish right now. And I haven't done the other side yet, so you can see how that looks. Right, so we're going to do the other side just like we did this one. And then we'll see where we want to take it from there. All right, now you can stop at any point when you got the level of polish that you want. Now, for me, I'm going to take it another step. And I'm going to go to 600 grit emery cloth. And I'm going to go over the blade with that. I put on a sanding block for doing the flatter spots so I don't put any waves in it. And the last step in the process for me is to go over it with 4 row steel wool and just just buff it up well that's how we got the blued finish off of the blade and uh, now it's time to address the grip all right well the last step i'm going to take in in defarbing the malden sword is uh, going to be to rewrap the hilt right now it has what i would call a Hollywood hilt on it. So I'm going to take this off because it looks like it's all just leather strips. Well I filed a slight taper into the handle. Uh, basically I tapered it towards the pommel. I'm just going to rasp the blades, the, uh, the hilt smooth here. It doesn't have to be sanded smooth. And you'll see, you'll see why not. Alright, so now I'm going to put a couple of bands here on the leather, right? So I'm going to use pieces of leather that I'm going to glue on and I'm skiving them so that they will uh, overlap. When I glue them together and that just means thinning the leather out. I've actually got a skiving tool right here but I'm never any good with it so I usually for stuff like this unless it's big pieces I just skiv it by hand. So I cut out the two bands and now I'm gluing them down. Okay now comes the last major step or we're going to glue the leather down. I just want to point out something that if I appear to know what I'm doing on this project, <laughs> that is just an illusion. I have never done never done this before. So, however it comes out, it's going to be about as much of a surprise to me as it is to you. All right, let's see. All right, that doesn't look too bad. I'll tell you what, though. I've got a gap right there, which I am not happy about. So I'm going to have to think about that. But in general, we'll see how we got. All right. So in general, pretty good. I should have made the leather a little bit longer this way because it pulled down. But got good definition on the risers feels very good. Okay, so I've got a little gap down there. 
And I think I've already figured out how I'm going to deal with that. All right, the stain is dried. Now it's time to take a look at this. Uh, so like I said, this is the first one I've done. And if anybody thinks I know what I'm doing, well, this will prove I don't. So I've got a space at each end. And what I should have done, because the leather when it dries is going to shrink, is I should have made this extra long, wrapped it, and then when it dried, cut the excess off. So, lesson learned for the next one. Okay, I think this is turning out pretty well. What I did, let me reach in front of the camera here, is I took some linen cord, very thin linen cord, I waxed it with beeswax, and I've wrapped, wrapped the hilt with it. And I think it's coming out pretty good. So I'm going to do the other two sections, and um, I'll show you what I did. All right, so here is the finished hilt, which I think came out quite good. And it's very comfortable. So even with the uh, even with the um, string wrap, cord wrap, the risers are still prominent enough to really give you a good grip. So I'm very, very pleased with it. The wax gives it a good little tack. And as, uh, as it's handled more, it'll go more to the color of the leather because the wax will get rubbed in. The, the light look to it right now is really because of the, um, the excess wax that's on it. And as that gets rubbed more and more into the cords, they will pick up more of the color of the leather. There we go. Let's see. I am very pleased with the way the sword came out. Okay, so the molden sword came with this really crappy, uh, thin leather sheath. Uh, that had kind of a funky belt frog on it, though, admittedly, most of them don't have any belt attachments, so, you know, what the heck. But what I wanted to do was transform it into a period-correct wood cord linen-wrapped scabbard. So I'll show you how we did that. Now, this is going to be mostly still pictures uh, because this was not a process that really lent itself to videotaping. Okay, so I've gotten some comments on the other video that said, hey, scabbards would have been leather wrap, not linen wrap. They wouldn't have been white, should be brown, blah, 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 blah. And look, I appreciate all your input on this, but like never say never. You know, actually, there are any number of uh, illustrations from the period that show these linen wrap scabbards and that show them as being white. Uh, so here's, here's just one of them. And this one was uh, was one of my inspirations. Um, so these are Frankish warriors, 9th century uh, warriors. And um, they've got linen wrapped scabbards that are very much like the one that I made. And as, as you see from the caption, it says that a lot of them were in white, though they could have been colored. I could have made this blue or red or whatever, but I made it white. So here's how I did it. Okay, so you're not going to see me making the wood core because I happen to already have uh, the core made. Um, and I was actually going to do a leather wrap scabbard, but I, I started finding these linen wrap scabbards and decided to do one. So basically, this is a wood core, and it's covered with a, uh, a base layer of linen. It's just glued on with Elmer's glue. And what I'm doing now is I'm using leather strips to make the risers. Uh, that appear, you know, in kind of an intricate pattern on this. And as, as you saw from the illustration I used, I'm putting a cross on it to protect the blade from the heathens, because so I think that's that's kind of cool. So this is what it looked like with the base layer of linen and all of the leather risers glued into place. So after that was done, the next step was to take the outside layer of linen and to glue that over all of those risers and, and as you can see that was not easy i had to do it a section at a time and i had to make um, um popsicle stick and tongue depressor uh 
uh, plates basically to press it down around each riser. So I had to go riser by riser with my glue until I had that whole area done. All right, I know this is hard to see and I really don't have detailed pictures of this, but the bottom eight inches of the scabbard is all pleated linen. Uh, and basically in order to do this, I needed almost three feet of extra linen beyond the end of the scabbard to make that series of, of pleats uh, to give me that eight inches of, of pleating. So that, that seems to be in all the originals that I've seen. God only knows why they did it, but it really complicates things. But, um, but I got that in, and that was pretty much the, the last step. Then I glued up the back. And I painted this white with gesso. Gesso is a paint that they use on canvas to seal it so you can paint it with oil paint or uh, acrylic paints or whatever. So I, I left it white uh, because, as, as that illustration I showed you shows, that a lot of them were just left white. And I decided that was how I was going to do it. And then I finished it off by putting some belt attachments on it, and voila, man, that's the whole deal. So that's the whole story of how I went from this to this. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, give it a thumbs up. You know the deal. Uh, subscribe to the channel, and we'll try to have more good stuff for you.